So I'm going to talk about the spine. Um, we call it, uh, so it's the spine posture predictor or spine predictor tool. And uh, it deals with interaction with a priori knowledge. So the need and rationale for that specific tool is that we've seen that postural changes uh, in themselves, they are not straightforward. Uh, there are numerous degrees of freedom, but if you consider the spine segment as just being one segment that you wish to position, you still have 24 or 25 joints to position for the spine. We've also seen that um, there were numerous targets and constraints to deal with, both extrinsic and intrinsic to the HBM. And I think that the spine-specific issue is that, again, um, you, may still, you may know the posture and the orientation and location of the head and the pelvis, for example, but you don't really know how you're going to position or how you're going to define these curvatures on your spine. Because there's a lack of either user knowledge or data knowledge. So the objective of this predictor was to develop an easy-to-use physiological predictor of the spine and posture, posture based on limited knowledge. So that was accounting for described quantified intervariability between subjects, so for the spine and curvatures, and accounting for described and quantified posture-dependent uh, changes in curvatures that would occur, for example, in the presence of a seat, or seat back, uh, or when you're changing posture between standing or in seated, seated and standing. So you can see that um, here, between those two postures, you have a uh, an um, antiversion of the pelvis and then a straightening of the lumbar spine, which is quite significant. So we used splines again, uh, two splines to define the cervical segment and the thoracolumbar segment. Uh, why splines? Because they are easy to fit and they are easy to describe with, with a small number of parameters. Uh, so seven spline parameters for the two splines, plus one global sagittal orientation uh, to position it in space. Based on this approach, we defined um, what I call a physiological validated in vivo postural database, uh, which is created based on uh, in vivo data, that's very important, uh, that's coming both from MRI data and X-ray data, either from the literature or from uh, data that we had, previous studies. But basically, for the six postures that you can see here, we were able to define the associated parameters by fitting the splines on each of these postures. So that means that visually, this is the Piper reference model, by the way, visually you end up with, uh, by using these splines, uh, by obtaining these postures which are supine, sitting driving, sitting erect, standing erect, sitting slouch, and forward flexed. And the idea is to use, uh, simply, these postures as end postures to interpolate a predicted target between user-defined chosen postures. So this is how it looks like. There's going to be a, a demonstration just afterward. But you go into the pre-positioning uh, module, you choose the predictor, which is the spine predictor. And then, as a user, what it will provide, so this tool will provide to the formation module either a spline or uh, body coordinate systems, which are anatomical frames that you can export as well, if you want to. As a user, I can choose two physiological end postures, so they're called A and B currently from six in the sagittal plane, the six we've seen before. Then, as a user, I can choose a single user-defined interpolation parameter, which is called a target posture, which is, which is just a percentage of transformation between posture A and B. You can go between minus 20% to 120%, and that defines the postural target between the two end postures. Lateral flexion is controlled separately by coordination laws, and uh, so you have to define as a user cervical angle and a thoracolumbar angle. And the final target is either defined relative to the current L5 orientation, so the fifth lumbar vertebra, or absolute uh, relatively to uh, an absolute uh, referential, which is oriented by the gravity vector. Finally, there's an indication of the level of confidence of the prediction. I won't go into the detail, but it's explained in the documentation. Some examples of targets, I hope you can see them. So that's the input model. It's just a stick figure, for, I think it's easier. Uh, it's an input model, let's assume it's a pedestrian model standing erect. You can see the spline and the coordinates, uh, body coordinate system. And let's say, as a user, I'm choosing posture A number six, which is seated driving, and then posture B, any. Any, because I'm choosing for the target posture percentage of transformation, 0%. So I'm in seated driving posture. I should end up with a seated driving posture. And that's the spline that was created um, on the right side, or blue one, if you can see uh, the colors. But this one is the seated uh, posture 
close to, let's say, Robbins, for example, if you know this, uh, this paper. Then let's say I'm using this uh, new model as an input, and I'm in seated posture, seated driving. And I'm choosing for posture B, number five, which is forward flexed. And I'm choosing a transformation parameter of 0.2, so 20% of transformation, and align that to gravity, and it means I'm flexing forward. I can choose 0.6, etc., and still bending forward with a physiological posture. So this way, I'm quickly positioning an occupant at various spine, spine flexion angles. There's another way, which is to uh, use the alignment with L5. In that case, I chose posture B number three, which is seated direct, for example, and I orient it at 100% of transformation, so in seated, full seated direct posture, but I align it to L5, which means that I've got this very uh, straight spine aligned to L5, and I could do this with any kind of other combination. So in that way, I can play with postural variations and curvatures, but maybe play very quick uh, to position the spine against the seat back. So key points are that basically there's one single parameter to control. You can end up with multiple physiological solutions. And we also provide tools, number, number, um, a few tools uh, to uh, add your own, for example, reference and postures to the database. If you have a child data, for example, seated posture, you can add it and it's going to work exactly the same. How I see it, it's a quick and easy prepositioning tool, and you could use any other tool, such as the prepositioning tool uh, for head positioning, so you're doing flexion, and then you want to, you have to have your vision horizontal, then you're using the prepositioning tool to uh, modify the head orientation. For the demo. A short demo again. Uh, about this uh, spine predictor. Um, now it's on the GHBMC model, since um, the spine predictor is targeting uh, adult uh, model. Just to note, uh, the GHBMC model loads in five minutes on this laptop. Uh, so you will recognize the, the GUI that uh, Bertrand has just shown. Um, so I activate the, the, the spine predictor. I can choose my source and target posture. Uh, I won't change this, so between sitting driving and forward flexed, I can choose uh, something like, okay, nearly sitting driving, and, and then I can update, and uh, I will, uh, wh what it does now, it, it's running in the background um, Octave script, Octave MATLAB script that have been implemented uh, by Bertrand and uh, his trainee. Um, that is computing some targets that are being read just after by the application. So you can see maybe the green line, which is the result of the computation. So this line I is displayed here uh, as computed by the Octave script, which means uh, it's in an uh, absolute coordinate system. Uh, the line that will be used by the simulation is another one because uh, the simulation uh, will really move the, the pelvis in that case, and uh, the octave script, the predictor, doesn't know how to move the pelvis. Um, so I will just tune a little bit uh, and put some uh, toracolumbar torac angle. So we run again the, the predictor. So here we are. So on this view, we can really see that we have some 3D uh, movement in, in the curve. Uh, to do the positioning, we remember that we, we need to fix some bones or all the model will, will be moving. So again, just fix uh, the legs. Uh, we can display the skin. So here is the target that is being used by the simulation. Since we, ch we have chosen to align gravity, uh, the, the system has added a frame-to-frame -frame controller to control the orientation of the pelvis. So this value uh, has been given by uh, the Octave script. And then we can uh, run the simulation. Uh, for that one, I will also, well, at least at the first, uh, deactivate the collision since it's uh, faster without it. And since I know it, I need to tune a little bit the stiffness uh, for the model to, to move and to reach actually the, the targets that I need. 
Ah, sorry, I, I load the positioning without with collisions. So. Uh, the stiffness of, of the target uh, is like the stiffness of the spring that is pulling the model uh, to uh, to its target position. Oh, it's a bit okay. Uh, in the meantime, let's go for the movie. <laughs> so it's basically uh, the same. So the spline, uh, th there are two constraints coming into the, the simulation. So the orientation of uh, the pelvis and the target spline is moving with the pelvis and, and then will attract the, the spine uh, of the model. Ah, still uh, not here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the video has been uh, made faster. So here uh, I show again uh, the controller on the pelvis. You have maybe seen the, the frames appearing here, which is a world frame and the pelvis anatomical frame. And the orientation of the pelvis is controlled through the transformation between those two frames. And, and then the, the frame controller stiffness has to be tuned a little bit to make sure the pelvis constraint is uh, reached. And the same is, is done with, uh, with the stiffness on uh, here, the spine controller. At the same time, you see the error measures here that decreases. So this is a total absolute uh, error. And uh, on the right, it's uh, the maximum error for, for the, the farthest uh, vertebra from the spine. At the end, okay. Mm -hmm. Still, still not in a good shape. So this is the end of this for this demo, and we are getting to Anise.